A very good morning to all. Today we are here to understand the significance of today's date, that is 26 November. While on 26 November, the Constituent Assembly of India adopted the Constitution of India, which came into effect from 1950, the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment on 19th November 2015 notified the decision of the government of India to celebrate 26 November as Constitution Day. I would like to quote Thomas Jefferson from his letters. I know no safe depository of the ultimate powers of the society, but the people themselves. And if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion by education. This is the true corrective of abuses of constitutional power. Constitution isn't a symbol that requires empty celebrations. It requires adherence to constitutionalism. A day of significance and value in a two democracy, let's see further what we can unravel about the constitutions of the world. Before we start, I have a humble request. Please keep your videos on for first five minutes as we have to click some photographs. Only first five minutes, then we can switch it off. Keep yourself on unmute mode. We have weaved our talk with few questions. You can answer either through the chat box answer or unmute. I'm sure you all will enjoy today's celebrations of the Constitution Day. So over to Omanshi. Omanshi. You're not visible. You're not audible, beta. Sorry, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Karo kuch aisa, desh ka samman bhar jaye. Maro to aise, tirange ki shan bhar jaye. Bharo pichkari, aise tino rango ki, tan par pade to Hindustan ban jaye. A very good morning to respected vice principal, ma'am. Vice principal, ma'am and all my views. Welcome to the Constitution Day. We are your host and dost. I, Omanshi Sharma. I am Natasha Chahan. Today, we will have some Vidhan Par Charcha, which will be divided into three segments. First, we will discuss about the Indian Constitution. The second segment, we will cover the preamble. Third, we will emphasize on the difference between Indian constitution and constitution of other countries. Moving on to our first segment. Before we start our first segment, I have a, a question for our audience. So what, according to you, is Samvidhan? Anyone from the audience, please? Can I? Yeah, sure. Samvidhan, uh, basically in English means our constitution. Uh, constitution is uh, can, can be called a document which has all the all our laws, our duties as a citizen, and all the rights which we as a citizen can practice in the country. Yeah, that's the right answer. So anybody would like to add something to this? Uh, yeah, the constitution is basically a legal framework or a document which comprises of, as uh, she said, uh, stated earlier, all the laws and uh, fundamental rights and all uh, any sort of legalities which are uh, which we are entitled to as a citizen of India. And it is one document which is uh, legally binding in nature to all citizens of India uh, alike, no matter their caste, creed, gender, age, race. 
yeah that's also a correct answer in different words um anyone else want to say something because to have already spoken anyone else i have read this quote somewhere the constitution is not mere lawyer's document it is a vehicle of life and its spirit is always the spirit of age so in context with all these above statement constitution means a set of fundamental principles basic rules and established precedent it identifies defines and regulates various aspects of a state and the structure powers and functions of the major institution under the three organs of the government the executive the legislature and the judiciary excuse me can i ask a question here yeah sure yeah so my question is uh, do you know the indian judiciary is independent yet integrated so under which article the judiciary is independent so the options are article 23 article 21 article 50 or article 5 anyone from the audience Yeah. Guys, come on! Legal students must be knowing which under which article judiciary. Under article fifty. Yes, that's the right answer. Article fifty. That's absolutely the correct answer. Now, talking about the constitution in detail. it also provides for rights and freedom of citizen spells out the relationship between individual citizen and the state government the constitution of any country serves several purposes it lays down certain ideals that form the basis of the kind of country that we as citizen aspire to live in a country is usually made up of different communities of people who share common beliefs but may not necessarily agree on all the issues a constitution helps serve as a set of principles rules and procedures on which there is a common consensus these form the basic according to which the people wants the country to be governed and the society to move on this includes not only any agreement on the type of government but also on certain ideals that the country should uphold the indian constitution has certain core constitutional values that constitute its spirit and are expressed in various articles and provisions another question for the audience do you know how many articles are there in the indian constitution currently the options for which are 432 448 470 or 125 articles anyone would like to answer 448 yes that is the right answer 448 articles indian constitution is one of the longest written constitution an interesting fact is that it took 2 years 11 months and 18 days to make the indian constitution it was prepared by a representative body known as the constituent assembly The Constituent Assembly was called Mini India, as members represented various sections and groups of the country. Most of its members were deeply involved in the freedom struggle. They were respectfully called the founding fathers of the Constitution. I have a question here. Why do you think the drafting of the Constitution took so long? Can I answer? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, I believe is that leaders from different regions and religions made up the Constituent Assembly. Like you said, it was a mini India. So all of them had a very different viewpoint, and to accumulate them together, keeping in view what's best for the country, of course. So uh, the issues were deeply discussed and debated thoroughly, and I think which led to the making of one of the finest constitution in the world. Uh, very well said. I think that that's the correct answer. anyone who would like to add something to it uh yeah i think we should also keep in mind that our country is uh, one of the only countries to have such a diverse culture so every uh, as it's many times stated in uh, articles as well as 
as we move along india every uh, every few hours we get to see a completely different culture so of course to accumulate and uh, just keep in mind and respect all those cultures while going in hand uh, hand in hand with all the ideals and ideologies to make sure that our country is on the same page uh, it was going to definitely take a lot of time for them to produce a document which is uh, so in de- uh, so in detail as well as uh, so bre- uh, very like well written in nature therefore it uh, it's uh, i think it's necessary and it's a good thing it took so much time because as uh, i mean as the people before me have stated it is truly one of the finest uh, constitutions in this world yeah that ideology is also correct thank you the process of constitution making was greatly influenced by the following factors first aspiration generated during the long drawn freedom struggle second the constitutional and political changes that took place during the british rule third the ideas and thought of mahatma gandhi properly known as gandhism fourth the socio cultural ethos of the country and the fifth the experiences of the functioning of constitution in other democratic countries of the world the constitution came into effect on 26 january 1950 and since then we celebrate this day as the republic day every year the constitution of india defines all the aspects of the indian political system including its basic objectives it has provisions regarding first the territory that india will compromise second citizenship third fundamental rights fourth directive principles of state policy and fundamental duties fifth the structure and the functioning of government at the union state and local level and several other aspects of the political system can i ask another question uh yeah sure yeah so what is the significance of 26 january like i've heard somewhere that in 1930s and like the lahore session of congress in 1929 so is there a significance or relation between them um anyone from the audience would like to answer anyone want to give their viewpoint can i answer the question yeah Sure. Thank you. So, in December nineteen twenty nine, under the presidency of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the Lahore Congress had uh, formalized the demand uh, for Purna Swaraj, or as we say, the full independence of India. So, it was declared that twenty six January nineteen thirty would be celebrated as the Independence Day, when people were to take a pledge to struggle for complete freedom. um so it was decided that we are going to be celebrating uh, 26 january as the independence day but we were granted formal independence on 15th august 1947 hence it was decided that 26 january will be celebrated as the republic day absolutely correct answer thank you the constitution defines india as a sovereign democratic socialist and secular republic it has provisions for bringing about social change and defining the relationship between individual citizen and the state constitutional values are reflected in the entire constitution of india but it preamble embodies the fundamental values and philosophy on which the constitution is based it has a provision for amendment which makes it flexible but at the same time one cannot amend its basic structure hereby making it rigid it is called a living document as because it can be amended or changed our constitution accepts the necessity of modification according to changing needs of the society the constitution is an instrument that society create for themselves of our constitution is called living document for the same reason i have another co- question fundamental rights are legally enforceable where fundamental duties are not so do you think that it is justified that you can enjoy your rights without fulfilling your duties anyone who would like to answer this question 
uh, can i uh, yeah yeah as harshika stated i totally disagree with the idea that uh, we can enjoy our rights without fulfilling our duties as because fundamental right, uh, rights and fundamental duties are equally important the duties are uh, needed for building nationhood and a vibrant civil society if fundamental rights gives us liberty and powers as a citizen then fundamental duties pose a moral obligation on us to give something in return to our nation like uh, for example fundamental rights gives us the right to freedom that doesn't mean that we use that freedom to exploit the environment in that case we must abide by our duty of protecting it as because only a nation which you know uh, like only a nation which abides all the standards as a citi uh, a citizen should can pro uh, can prosper uh, more so yeah i disagree that we can enjoy our rights without fulfilling our duties thank you so much absolutely correct uh, this bring us to the end of our segment 1 So before going further we will read the preamble to the constitution to reaffirm our undying faith in our constitution and preserving its sanctity at all costs it is time to feel pride in the nation of our birth we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution now in the second segment we will discuss about the preamble may i now request shona to throw some light on the preamble excuse me uh, yes uh i'm sorry uh, at it's 11 o'clock and i guess the reading is about to start so let's here uh, the president reciting the preamble prime minister is about to read the preamble thank you ananya ananya are we sharing the link Ma'am, uh, can you just tell me is it visible or not? Yes, it's very much visible. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just a minute. Not be divorced from fraternity. हमारे संविधान निर्माताओं के सामने एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण विषय पर चर्चा हुई जिसके बाद भारत की संस्कृति संस्कार और सभ्यता मूलक इतिहास के प्रभाव को भी विभिन्न छवियों के द्वारा संविधान में स्थान दिया गया और उसी का असर रहा कि इन चित्रों के द्वारा मूल संविधान को एक जीवंत स्वरूप प्रदान किया गया भारत के प्रख्यात चित्रकार और रेखाकार श्री नंदलाल बोस से आग्रह किया गया था उस समय कि वो भारत के हजारों वर्षों की इस प्रभावी सांस्कृतिक प्रवाह को मूल संविधान में स्थान दे जिन्हें चित्रों के जरिए संविधान में शामिल किया गया माननीय राष्ट्रपति श्री रामनाथ कोविंद जी हम भारत के लोग हम भारत के लोग भारत को भारत को एक संपूर्ण प्रभुत्व संपन्न एक संपूर्ण प्रभुत्व संपन्न समाजवादी पंथ निरपेक्ष समाजवादी पंथ निरपेक्ष लोकतंत्रात्मक गणराज्य बनाने के लिए लोकतंत्रात्मक गणराज्य बनाने के लिए 
तथा उसके समस्त नागरिकों को तथा उसके समस्त नागरिकों को सामाजिक आर्थिक और राजनैतिक न्याय सामाजिक आर्थिक और राजनैतिक न्याय विचार अभिव्यक्ति विश्वास विचार अभिव्यक्ति विश्वास धर्म और उपासना की स्वतंत्रता धर्म और उपासना की स्वतंत्रता प्रतिष्ठा और अवसर की समता प्राप्त कराने के लिए प्रतिष्ठा और अवसर की समता प्राप्त कराने के लिए तथा उन सब में तथा उन सब में व्यक्ति की गरिमा व्यक्ति की गरिमा और राष्ट्र की एकता और अखंडता और राष्ट्र की एकता और अखंडता सुनिश्चित करने वाली बंधुता बढ़ाने के लिए सुनिश्चित करने वाली बंधुता बढ़ाने के लिए दृढ़ संकल्प होकर दृढ़ संकल्प होकर अपनी इस संविधान सभा में अपनी इस संविधान सभा में आज तारीख 26 नवंबर उन्नीस ईस्वी को आज तारीख 26 नवंबर उन्नीस ईस्वी को एक द्वारा द्वारा इस संविधान को इस संविधान को अंगीकृत अधिनियमित अंगीकृत अधिनियमित और और आत्मार्पित करते हैं और आत्मार्पित करते हैं धन्यवाद And having read the preamble of the Constitution and reaffirming the commitment to the Constitution and the values enshrined in the Constitution, the leaders of the various assemblies and councils and legislatures of our country will now return to their working session, and we return to the studios of Doordarshan. The preamble to the Constitution of India is a brief introductory statement that sets out guidelines which guide the people of the nation and to present the principles of the Constitution and to indicate the source from which the document derives its authority and meaning. It reflects the hopes and aspirations of the people. The preamble can be referred to as the preface which highlights the entire Constitution. It was adopted on 26 November 1949 by the Constituent Assembly. It came into effect on 26 January 1950, celebrated as the Republic Day in India. Preamble was made in 1947 but adopted in 1949. I have another question. Do you think the preamble is same since independence? Anyone from the audience who would like to answer? Can I answer this question? Yes, you can. The preamble has not been changed much, except an addition of words was made through the 42nd Amendment Act 1976 of the Indian Constitution, and the words were Socialist, secular, and integrity. The preamble to the Constitution contains the ideals on which the Constitution is based and the basic underlying principles of the Constitution. The importance of the preamble can be stated as follows. Number one, the preamble contains the philosophy on which the entire Constitution has been built. It provides a standard to examine and evaluate any law and action of the government to find out whether it is good or bad. Hence, it is the soul of the constitution. Number two, the preamble shows the way the government ought to run. It declares India to be a sovereign, socialist, secular, and democratic republic. Number three, it envisages justice social, economic, and political for all citizens. 
it seeks to give the citizens all types of freedoms like freedom of thought and expression freedom of belief and worship etc number 4 the preamble mentions people as the source of the constitution it seeks to provide equality of status and opportunity to all individuals and thus promotes a sense of brotherhood among all citizens this come to an end of our sec of our second segment so now we have understood about our constitution now let us talk about the constitutions of other country for this may i now invite tejaswini and satyam to enlighten us thank you natasha constitution of the united states of america The United States of America is a federal republic consisting of 50 states and a federal district. So what do we mean by the presidential democracy? So president is the head of the state and the head of the government. Now what do we mean by federal system? It is a federal state that emerged from an initial agreement between a number of separate states. Did you know that in the United States the constitution is the rule of the law? Yes, in the United States, the Constitution is the king. Only laws passed through the mechanisms established by the Constitution are valid. The separation of powers and checks and balances is another prominent feature of the United States of America. Now over to Satyam. Thank you, Tejaswini. Constitution of UK. The UK's form of government is a constitutional monarchy with a par- parliamentary system, and its capital city is London. It consists of four countries: England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. The constitution is not written in the sense of having a single document defining the powers of government and rights of individuals. Nevertheless, many sources of constitutional law are written, and these, together with the non-legal rules, make up the British government. The constitution is not flexible; is flexible and based on continuity of development. In the absence of a writ- written constitution having the status of fundamental or higher law. the concept of parliamentary sovereignty or legislative supremacy represents the cornerstone of the constitution there is no strict separation of powers be- between the executive legislature and judiciary although a separation of functions exists and the ex- concept retains importance under the constitution the united kingdom has a constitutional monarchy now over to tejaswini thank you satyam Now the constitution of France the current constitution of France was adopted on 4th October 1958 it is typically called the constitution of the 5th republic and replaced that of the 4th republic dating from 1946 the preamble of the constitution establishes France as a secular and a democratic country deriving its sovereignty from the people It provides for the election of the president and the parliament, the selection of the government, and the powers of each in uh, relations between them. It ensures judicial authority and creates a high court, a council, a constitutional council, and an economic and social council. It was designed to create a politically strong president. It enables the ratification of international treaties and those associated with European Union. The constitution also sets out methods for its own amendment either by referendum or through a parliamentary process with presidential consent. Now over to Satyam. Thank you Tejaswini. Constitution of Russia. Russia is a federal semi-presidential republic comprising 83 federal subjects. The constitution establishes a semi-presidential system resembling the French system but with stronger executive power due to the increase independence of the president in comparison to the french model the president of the russian federation holds primary power in the russian political system the president who is elected for 6 year term following the 2008 amendments to the constitution is the head of state and the supreme commander in chief of the armed forces of the russian federation the constitution prescribes that the government of russia is the executive branch of state power and is consisting of a prime minister chairman of the government deputy prime ministers and federal ministers and their ministers and departments the legislatures enact checks and balances are reflected in the ability of the federal council 
to examine and subsequently revise or reject legislation passed by the Duma. Thank you, Satya. Now we are going to share some interesting facts about the 10 oldest constitutions of the world. The Constitution of Australia was imposed on January 1, 1901. It is made of several documents. Originally, the Constitution of Australia gave the United Kingdom power to change the laws. But in 1986, Queen Elizabeth II signed the Australian Act 1986, which ensured that the UK has no legal ties to Australia. In the list of the oldest constitutions, on the ninth position, we have the Constitution of Tonga, which was enforced on November 4, 1875. If you don't know, Tonga is an island state in Polynesia that consists of more than 160 islands, but only 39 of those are inhabited. The country is a constitutional monarchy. The Tongan constitution, like the US constitution, was written to create a balance between the legislative, executive, and judiciary part of the government. On eighth number, we have the Constitution of Luxembourg, which came into effect on October 17, 1868. The Constitution of Luxembourg is a set of laws that people of the Grand Dutch of Luxembourg follow. It is a modern constitution, but it dates back in 1868, and it has amended several times over the years. There are 121 articles in the Constitution, and it is divided over 13 different chapters. After that, we have the Constitution of Canada, which was enforced on July 1st, 1867, and was created due to the Constitution Act 1867, which established Canada as a patriotic from the UK. One of the most interesting things about Canada is that it's a bi-dural country, or one, that has both a civil and a common law system. This means that every law passed in Canada must take both into account and must print laws in both English as well as in French. Next, we have the Constitution of Argentina, which came into effect on May 1, 1853. The Constitution of Argentina is the main legal document of which all laws are based in the country. The drafted primarily by John Distinger, he based the Argentinian constitution on the US constitution. This constitution has been reformed six times. It has four parts to the Argentinian constitution and rights of the people are divided into four different categories, civil, patrimonial, politic, and social. After that, on the fifth position, we have the constitution of Denmark which was enforced on June 5, 1849. The Constitution of Denmark forms part of the laws of the Kingdom of Denmark, but not all, as the country is also ruled by the royal law. Not only does the Constitution affect the Kingdom of Denmark, but also the Faroe Islands and Greenland. Like most constitutions, this one lays out the basis of Denmark's government and also explains the rights of citizens, including freedoms of religion and speech. There is also information about the country's military service, which is compulsory. As one of the oldest constitutions in the world, Denmark's constitution only has a few amendments. The original constitution had 100 sections, which have been amended down to 89 sections. Next, the constitution of Belgium, which came into effect on 7th February, 1831. At this time, Belgium declared independence from the Kingdom of Netherlands and established itself as a constitutional monarchy under King Leopold I. The constitution of Belgium remained largely unchanged till 1993. At this point, the original one from 1831 was revised and changed significantly. It also changed the government into a federal state and the constitutional monarchy. The last time the Belgian constitution was changed, it was amended in 2012. On the third position, we have the constitution of the Netherlands, which was enforced on March 29, 1815. And then it was greatly revised on October 11, 1848. 
this change to government to a parliamentary democracy. However, it has been changed many a times since then, including in 2002, when it was the final time. The Netherlands constitution also contains rights for its citizens, but these were not added until 1983. Currently, the government of Netherlands is controlled by King William Alexander, along with the Prime Minister and the Senate and the House of Representatives, which make up their parliament. Next, we come to the Constitution of Norway, which came into effect on May, May 17, 1814. The Constitution of Norway is the second oldest constitution in the world, which is still being used. The Norwegian Constitution was founded on ideals including sovereignty of the people, human rights, and separation of powers. This constitution established three branches of the government, and it has been changed several times. United States Constitution, which was enforced on June 21, 1788. The oldest constitution in the world is the U.S. Constitution. The U.S. Constitution is made up of seven articles, a preamble, and a closing endorsement. In addition, the Constitution has a Bill of Rights and several, several amendments. The Philadelphia Convention is credited with writing the U.S. Constitution, and James Madison is known as the father of their Constitution. By this, we come to an end of our talk show. Now we will move on to a small presentation on the topic Bill or Right versus Fundamental Rights, then a case study, and in the end, a small quiz to wrap up the event. Have you heard of the term Bill of Rights? Yes, a Bill of Rights, sometimes called a Declaration of Rights or a Charter of Rights, is a list of the most important rights to the citizens of a country. The purpose is to protect rights against infringement from public officials and private citizens. Isn't it true that a Bill of Rights exists in South Africa? Yes, indeed, it's true. It stands as a cornerstone of democracy in South Africa. It enshrines the right of all the people in the country and affirms the democratic values of human dignity, equality and freedom. Are you aware of the event that led to the formation of the Bill? Yes, the Bill of Rights was born out of the amalgamation of the universal fight against injustice that took place after the Second World War and the fight against the inhumane rule of the apartheid government in South Africa. Adding to your point, the Bill of Rights we know today is deeply influenced by two vital documents, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the South African Freedom Charter. But what are the rights under the Bill of Rights provided to the citizens? The rights given under the Bill of Rights include equality, human dignity, freedom and security of the person, slavery, servitude and forced labor. What differences do you find between the fundamental rights of India and Bill of Rights in South Africa? Well, firstly, the right to vote, which finds a place in the Bill of Rights, is only a legal right in India. That is, it does not have a status of fundamental right. The South a Secondly, the South African Constitution provides for the creation of a special constitutional court for the enforcement of Bill of Rights. This court has jurisdiction only over constitutional matters and controversies. Under the Indian Constitution, the Supreme Court endowed with writ jurisdiction, and lastly, rights such as the right to privacy and the right to healthy the environment, which had to be read into the fundamental rights in India by the jurisdiction, are, expli are explicitly mentioned in the Bill of Rights. Indeed, I wasn't aware of all these facts. Talking about differences, are there any similarities also? Yes. Most importantly, both Bill of Rights and Fundamental Rights form the bedrock of the Constitution and democracy under the Indian and South African Constitution, respectively. Interestingly, under both Constitutions, while most rights are available to citizens alone, some universally recognized rights, such as the right to 
life and equality are available to all people lastly either the fundamental rights nor the will of rights are absolute both well thank you for adding so many facts that i wasn't aware of into my knowledge now we move on to the case study on indian constitution the indian constitution is unique in both spirit and content notwithstanding the fact that several features of the constitution have been borrowed from other constitutions from all around the world it is really a unique piece of work the original constitution has been considerably changed by the various amendments that have been brought up forth such as the 7th 42nd 44th 73rd and 74th amendments every written constitution in the world has its own unique characteristics and no exception is the indian constitution but the indian constitution has many prominent features that distinguish it from other constitutions first of all it is the world's longest constitution secondly it has been taken from taken from various sources it has a quasi federal system it follows a parliamentary form of government it balances between sovereignty of parliament and judicial supremacy it has a independent and integrated judicial system it also has direct principles of state policy and it is a perfect combination of rigidity and flexibility now over to sagnik to tell how the constitution is a living document a living document the constitution is called a living document as it has provisions of amendments that is it can be changed or ratified as per the changing needs and requirements of the country it contains provisions to resolve socio economic problems judicial interpretations and executive orders also support the growth of the constitution the constitution is also capable to adapt to the new conditions as they arise now the success story of the indian constitution the indian constitution is one of the great success stories of the country it has integrated a diverse nation and has withstood grave threats to democracy in the past indian democracy and constitution have weathered storms in the past and they remain seaworthy in the future for the same reason it will be the beacon light for the future as well because the document expresses well the civilizational strength of india its diversity rooted in freedom of thought now for the conclusion indian constitution is one of its kinds it has its achievements and criticisms as believers of humanism which we all are we cannot possibly say we are disconnected from the indian constitution it gives us the values of humanity and therefore we must study it so in the end we can say that darjano bhashaye sekro vidhi hazaro vidhan hai jo jod kar sabko saath rakhe wahi hamara samvidhan hai on this note we come to an end of our show we will meet you again till then stay safe stay happy thank you uh now may i request everyone to switch on their cameras so that we can click a picture please thank you everyone even the audience and your students your attendance is through your google quiz form so make sure you don't disperse without filling it and submitting it Yes, I'm sending a link for the short quiz. Everybody is supposed to submit their responses, and as soon as you uh, submit your responses, you will get your score. So let's see who gets a perfect score.
and uh, while you all are filling up your quiz form i would take this opportunity to thank each member of the team to give such an enlightening session a heartfelt thanks to each one of you for your contribution to make this assembly so informative interactive and that too in a very short time for practice i really appreciate your initiative and your efforts made thank you each one of you thank you quite a lot thank you very much it was really a very enjoyable session i'm sure all of us from 11d and 12d found and enjoyed the enlightening presentation given by our own peer group i'm sure many of you are motivated to further be a part of these kind of presentations on this different events and days i firmly believe in one thing before we end up the session if we wish to maintain democracy not merely in form but also in fact we must hold fast to constitutional methods of achieving our social and economic objectives and you all can see during these trying times also we all are very systematically following the duties in order to exercise our rights so similarly in all the given situations i'm sure we will be successful in proving that our preamble and constitution is part of our life in our day to day life thank you very much for being such a beautiful audience thank you all thank you very much all the team thank you once again to put up such a beautiful show thank you very much thank you yes over to natasha now for the results thank you ma'am i have only got one response till now please take it seriously let's see i said attendance only through the form excuse me ma'am yes tushar ma'am i just log in to the form i just tap on the form and it's showing we are sorry but you do not have access to google hangouts please contact your organization administrator for for access have you opened the form through your g suite id i think so please check if it's your g suite id yeah That's because you will only be able to open your form through your G Suite ID. I think Natasha, we can give the students about ten minutes. We still have ten yes, minutes, so yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, I'm so sorry, but I'm not able to access the form itself, the quiz. We are using the G Suite ID. There should be no issue, Manya. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm using the G Suite ID. I'm constantly checking my Google Classroom. I can't find the link for the same. I have put the link in the chat box, so you can take it from oh, there okay. if you want. I'll put it again. Ma'am, I am joining to my uh, uh, G Suite ID, but it's not working. Try okay. again, Tushar. It should work. Okay, ma'am. I yeah, got three responses. I have a confusion in the Google form. Uh, yes. Like, how many articles are there? Four forty-eight or four seventy? That's the question. If I tell the answer, then everybody will know. No, because answer. in the class we discuss something else, and in the form the answer is something else. The closest one, Shruti. Okay, ma'am.
Ma'am, it's not working, ma'am. Ma'am, I can only say that Jesus is for you. Are you on a laptop or are you on a phone, Tushar? Phone, phone. So, you can see all your ideas on Google and you can just add your Jee Suit and then you can copy the link and copy it and open it. So, you can copy the link and open it directly and open it to incognito. Yes, you can also open it to incognito. Okay. Yes, I have a I have received 15 responses till now. The access to the form is very much very easy. As you click it, it is opening, so there should be no issue, please. Start submitting it. Let's see who gets 10. Full score. Ma'am, done.
Natasha, it's 40. Can you just spill the beans who got the highest marks so then we can join our other classes? Okay, let me see. Um, I have 44 forms right now. Is somebody else? Are others submitting right now? We should have 54. Uh, we, we were 63. Yes, so I just have 44 responses. Yes. Please, quickly. Otherwise, uh, I will not send your attendance to your class teacher. Now I have 45. Whoever has got the highest, Natasha, you can tell. The highest score is nine. And there are the lucky one. Mm -hmm. there are four students who have got nine. I'll just check who all are there. One is Shruti. Uh, one is Abriel Jyotir. I'm sorry. Abhiral Jyotir. Ma'am, I got 10 out of 10. Actually, one answer is not correct. Uh, there are 448 articles. And it's According to the latest information, there are 470 articles. I mean, All right. Correct me. Uh, it changed on 14 January 2009. Yeah, that's the latest information. And... Vaheem Kaul. Yes, very good. One is Shruti, uh, Abhiral, Vaheem Kaul. And one more is. Mansi Tomar. So these four people, they've got nine. So I think Hati, yeah, we can applaud for them. Mostly people are ranging from six to seven. Highest people got seven. Eleven people got seven. Then we have six eights, four nines. And mostly people uh, went wrong in that uh, number of articles question. They thought it was 448, but it was 470. So they need to update themselves with the passing years. Yes, ma'am. So that's the key thing, which everyone has to remember. All science means uh, updating yourself every day. So the nine scorers learned something new today.
Is there anyone else who's submitting? We have 49 responses. 